back to my YouTube channel guys, today we will study the chapter separation and purification. Do watch my previous videos before you start this chapter, so that you can get a clear understanding about the different types of apparatus used with different experiments. Obtaining pure substances from mixtures, a mixture is made up of two or more substances that are not chemically combined. A pure substance is made up of one single element or compound, it is not mixed with any other substance, in order to obtain a pure substance from seawater, we need to remove impurities. Separating a solid from a liquid, filtration is used to separate insoluble solid particles from a liquid, solid particles such as sand, clay and dust particles can be separated from water by filtration. Diagram of Filtration of Sand and Water A solid can be separated from a liquid by filtration because the filter paper acts as a sieve, a liquid can pass through the pores of the filter paper but a solid cannot do so. After filtration, the solid that remains on the filter paper is called the residue, the liquid, or solution that passes through the filter paper is called the filtrate. Evaporation to dryness is used to obtain a soluble solid from a solution by heating the solution until all the water has boiled off. Diagram showing the evaporation to dryness of a salt solution. Crystallization is used for obtaining a pure solid sample from its solution, an example of crystallization is that when copper 2 sulfate crystals are heated, they give off water and become powders. In crystallization, water is removed by heating the solution, heating is stopped when a hot saturated solution is formed, if the resulting solution is allowed to cool at room temperature, the dissolved solid will form as pure crystals. Let's do an investigation to obtain pure copper 2 sulfate crystals by crystallization. Dissolve the impure copper 2 sulfate crystals in water. Filter to remove any insoluble impurities, collect the filtrate, copper 2 sulfate solution, diagram on next page. Heat the copper 2 sulfate solution until it's saturated. When the solution is saturated, leave it to cool and crystallize. Filter to collect the crystals. Wash the crystals with a little cold distilled water to remove impurities, dry the crystals between a few sheets of filter paper. Separating solids, solute is the substance that is dissolved, solvent is the liquid that dissolves the solute, in a sugar solution, sugar is the solute and water is the solvent. To separate a mixture of two solids, we use a solvent in which only one solid is soluble and the other is insoluble, for example, sodium chloride is soluble in water but sand is not, so a mixture of sodium chloride and sand can be separated using water as a solvent. Sublimation is used to separate a solid that sublimes from the one that does not, for example, iodine sublimes on heating but sand does not sublime. So to separate a mixture of iodine and sand, we can use the apparatus shown on next page. Sublimation of iodine and sand.
A magnet can be used to separate a magnetic substance from a non-magnetic substance, for example, we can separate iron from a mixture of iron and sulfur using a magnet. Separating a liquid from a solution, distillation is used to separate a pure solvent liquid from a solution, diagram on next page. Distillation of salt solution. Distillation process, the solution boils in the distillation flask, water vaporizes, rises and enters the condenser, in the condenser, water vapor cools and changes back into pure water or distillate, the distillate is then collected in a conical flask, if distillation is allowed to carry on, salt will be left in the distillation flask. Separating liquids. Separating a mixture of two liquids will depend on whether the liquids are miscible or immiscible. Miscible liquids dissolve in each other while immiscible liquids do not. A separating funnel can be used to separate immiscible liquids, example oil and water. Pour the mixture of oil and water into the separating funnel, the tap should be closed, allow the liquids to separate completely, the denser liquid, water, will be the bottom layer. Open the tap of the funnel so that the bottom layer of water drains into the beaker, close the tap before the top layer of oil runs out. Place another beaker below the funnel, open the tap so that a little of the top layer of liquid flows into the beaker, dispose of the liquid collected, now the separating funnel contains oil and the beaker from step number 2 contains only water. Fractional distillation is used to separate a mixture of miscible liquids with different boiling points, for example, ethanol and water are miscible and they mix together completely to form a solution, diagram on next page. Fractional distillation of water and ethanol Ethanol and water rise up the fractionating column as the solution is heated the water vapor condenses in the fractionating column and falls back into the flask. Ethanol has a lower boiling point than water so it reaches the upper part of the column and is distilled over first. At this stage, the thermometer shows the temperature of 78 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of ethanol. In the condenser, hot ethanol vapor condenses and then the liquid ethanol is collected in a conical flask as the distillate. When all the ethanol is distilled over, the temperature on the thermometer rises to 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of water. At this temperature, water distills over and is collected separately. Chromatography is the method of separating two or more components that dissolve in the same solvent. It can be used to identify the components of a sample. A chromatogram shows the separated components of a sample. Chromatography is also used to determine the purity of a sample, a pure sample gives only one spot on the chromatogram, paper chromatography is used to separate dyes in ink, it's used to separate amino acids obtained from proteins, it's also used to identify poisons and drugs and detect the traces of banned substances in food. Paper Chromatography Apparatus Procedure, a spot of sample is applied on a chromatography paper, the paper is dipped in ethanol, ethanol is soaked up by the paper and dissolves the components of a sample, ethanol continues to travel up the paper, 
carrying the components of the sample along with it, a component that is not very soluble in ethanol will cover small distance on paper. The RF value of the substance can be calculated by the formula, distance traveled by the substance divided by distance traveled by the solvent. Calculating RF value In order to run a chromatogram of colorless substances, such as amino acids, we simply spray a locating agent on the chromatogram to make it visible, example of a locating agent is ninhydrin. Determining purity, a solid is pure if it has a constant or fixed melting point, a liquid is pure if it has an exact and constant or fixed boiling point. That's all for now, I hope you enjoyed this chapter. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon, see you guys in our next video.